Hello. Welcome. Welcome to our online service today when we're going to celebrate harvest. Uh, my name is Debbie Pow and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. I'm also a farmer's wife <clears throat> and it's wonderful to be able to welcome you, to bring you today to uh, one of the fields on our farm. If you follow our services online, this is pretty much the place I sat last week. If you remember last week, I was surrounded by tall maize plants, uh, eight, nine feet tall. This week we harvested, this was our last field to be harvested and it ends our, harv our farm harvest, which begins in May with the first cuts of grass that we ensile for the cattle feed for the winter. The main what most people think of as harvest being our cereal crops that, which are harvested at the end of July and in August. Um, and maize, this is another animal feed crop. It's all chopped up really small, amazing big machines that come in and just sweep through, just gobbling it up, chopping it really fine, blowing it into a trailer, which then takes it into uh, our what we call silage pits. Uh, which are somewhere behind me, <coughs> where it's ensiled and becomes silage. It pickles itself uh, and becomes silage and the cattle will eat that for the winter. It's lovely to be able to celebrate harvest when everything is harvested. So often we've still got the maize to harvest when we celebrate in church. This week, that's not the case. This year, that's not the case. Um, this is an informal service. As you may have guessed. Um, we'll just have the readings, and my sermon and some prayers. Um, I am recording on a working farm. Uh, I have got, my, got a little microphone thing here with, the, with one of those little fluffy heads that hopefully will cut out some of the background noise because I can hear and you may pick it up some uh, sounds that I think we're, there's some uh, rolling going on in the next field. The farm is incredibly busy at the moment, planting next year's crops while the weather is still dry. So I apologise if there's, there's those bits of sound that you pick up to, uh, if that disturbs, disturbs you. I hope you can filter it out, <coughs> if the microphone hasn't already. Anyway, let's begin with a pause. Let's our minds and our bodies catch up, our souls catch up together. And then I'll pray that beautiful prayer that I always use, um, that I think says everything in the first person, but make it your own as we come before God to give thanks uh, and to worship him. So let's just p pause for a moment and, and then I'll pray. <clears throat> Loving God, beloved one, let me be aware of you, with me and within me. Let me attend to each part of my body, all that's well and all that's poorly. Lord, Help me to let go of all in my life that lies in shadow. What I've done, what I've said, what I've thought. All that's not helpful or dishonours or mars your image in me. Have mercy on me. But let me trust your presence as I listen. Let me not be distracted by the clamour of every thought. But let my heart be still, my face unmasked, my mind unlearned. 
Let me not be afraid of all I know I cannot be. But let me trust that I am enough. That just to be here is enough, just as I am. And to trust that you look on me, my beloved, with eyes that see, with eyes that love, for you are love itself. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Joel from the Old Testament, from Joel chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer and the cutter, my my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt wondrously with you for my people shall never again be put to shame you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I the Lord am your God and there is no other and my people shall never again be put to shame The Gospel reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. And I'm looking at that, reading that. And over there, I don't know if you can see, is a hare. It's come to investigate. I don't know if you could see that. I hope you could. Um, I'll resume reading. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I apologise for that pause in the reading. I could see this brown creature, well I could 
thought it looked like a hair and then I thought is it a pile of maize and then it moved and I just wanted to share that the field the next field over and this field uh, so often have if I walk up through them uh, in the winter I'll put up so many skylarks they all nest in these fields uh, I'm very lucky to have this this wildlife on my doorstep but we do try and farm so that we have uh, that wildlife around us anyway that's not my sermon just thought I'd share I came uh, across a reading a, a reflection uh, the other day and it just ended with the words a church notice board said why pray when you can worry and it just tickled my fancy and I um, thought it was kind of linked to our readings today why pray when you can worry there's uh, so many times that we worry it seems to be a very human thing to do we we excel at worrying don't we whether it's uh, worrying about money or our health or our families or friends wars um, climate change all sorts of violence on our streets all sorts of things that we constantly worry about Maybe you've got a few other things that you would add to my list of worries. But one of the things we don't seem to worry very much about here, in, particularly in Bath, um, in our areas, uh, and at this time, is food. Supermarkets are piled high with food. Foods from all over the world uh, we can have things out of season, strawberries, raspberries. They seem to be in the supermarkets all year round. Asparagus, they're very seasonal uh, crops when we grow them in our gardens. And then there's the exotics, the pineapples, the uh, avocados, as well as our normal staples uh, in the UK. Granted that supermarket shelves aren't quite as full as they used to be. Um, prices have shot up. I looked at my husband's favourite the other day, Cadbury's Dairy Milk. The big ones, um, what was 200 grams, suffered from shrinkflation. It's gone up 25% overnight. Um, there are all those things going on and we are aware of many around us uh, for who there are so many other expenses that are so necessary that the food bank is an important part of their survival. But in this country we generally have plentiful food. Even those who struggle, there are those agencies, uh, Fair Share, uh, the, our produce that we'll be collecting in our churches, uh, the preserved foods will go to the food bank in Bath and the fresh food will go to a, a marvellous local charity called Action Pantry that look after 180 odd families who are in the poorest uh, households in Bath uh, and will get their fresh food from them. So there are these pockets of needs but as a farmer I also know that sometimes we don't pay enough for our food that sometimes it costs the producer more to produce the food than they are paid for their raw materials. We are so used to having food available all the time. Food is something we cannot live without. But we're so divorced, most people anyway, <laughs> perhaps I'm the exception, most of us are so divorced from the production of our food that we forget about uh, the uncertainty of our food supplies. This year has been quite a difficult growing year on the farm. 
you may remember uh, that it started raining I think it was about early October last year and it rained virtually every day until about May. Most of our crops, our main uh, cereal crops are planted in or sown in September and October. So I use the word planting, sowing, seeding, they're all interchangeable. A bit of farming technology, um, terminology. Um, but they are, this is what we're doing, busy doing now, planting next year's crops. When we're growing crops, we are trying to use as little of, um, chemical as we can, uh, both environmentally and from a cost perspective. And we have a weed that's quite prevalent in the UK called black grass, which out -compete, can outcompete uh, crops of wheat or barley. So what farmers do is try to delay their sowing. Uh, they get the, the black grass, which produces prolific amounts of seed, get it to germinate and then go through with the cultivator to disturb and kill all the, the, the germinating seedlings. Then they plant the main crop. What happened last year for most farmers is that in doing that, they lost the window uh, of planting their crops. Here we're in many ways fortunate, or we were last year, our land's quite sticky when it gets wet and we tend to, because we're a mixed farm, uh, we have cattle and uh, grow crops. And so we have crops like maize uh, that we've grown here that uh, is planted at different times of the year that, and grass is the other thing uh, we, we use as a break crop and that breaks the seed cycle for the black grass. So because of those things, because our, our land gets a bit sticky, we tend to push on and when we've got some dry weather as we have now, uh, we plant as much as we can. So last year we managed to get our crops in, but many in the UK didn't. Um, Farming always, you have to be a bit flexible. We tend to be reactive than necessarily proactive. It's always plan A, B, C, X, Y. And um, so many people last year ended up either planting very late into not very good seed beds, or they pro tried to plant spring crops, neither of which would yield as well as a well-planted autumn crop. So nationally this year, the UK harvest will be quite a bit lower, was quite a bit lower than it would normally be. Having said all that, August was amazingly dry this year. Usually when we get our combine out, to cop at least to do the wheat, often it's dry in end of July when we combine the barley and the wheat's a little bit later. When we get the combine out to, car to start harvesting that in August, down comes the rain and it's then a bit of you know nibble a bit here when we've got a, f a little dry window but this year was largely dry and so it was a fairly easy harvest for which we were very grateful and so we had all the main crops uh, combined by September just with uh, by the beginning well end of August uh, just with a some spring beans to do in the beginning of September. And this year, with that earlier harvest, usually it's, uh, it, it harvest ends and we're almost s straight away into uh, autumn cultivations. And there's, this year we had a bit of a break and we actually had a, a harvest supper for our staff this year as a, as a big thank you for the hours that they, the very long hours that they work all over the summer. Harvest is traditionally such a big festival with our divorce of land and uh, you know food production and where we live these days we forget to give thanks for so many people in so many you don't have to go back very far in time even in the UK for most people to be involved with food production and in in many parts of the world still where people are much more agrarian working the land um, harvest is a big celebration of the crops harvested in store. There's food for the next year and that is such a relief, 
so much to be grateful for. We, of course, look at it also with, from a, a perspective of God. God providing for us. God provides the rain. God may has made this beautiful planet in the way that it has with the temperatures that we have that allow us to grow these crops, allow us to feed ourselves. We can't make the rain come. We can't make the sun come. We can't make the cro crops grow. God has done all those things. He's made seeds. He's made life to grow. But I'm always amazed at life when we think about it. What is it that happens in the em embryo of those seeds that turns it from a little chem chemical reaction to life, life of its own? We have so much thanks to be thankful for. If you look around the hedgerows in the autumn, they're dripping with fruits, with blackberries, haws, hips. Blackberries are nearly over now. There's hazelnuts if you can get there before the squirrels. Our land naturally produces abundantly. It's got how God has made it. Reflecting on God's provision, being thankful. It's one of those ways that helps us to gain perspective. Remembering God's provision in the past remembering God's provision now. It's one of those things that helps us not to worry. You know, as Jesus said, don't worry about these things. God knows your needs and provides. It does help us to reflect and think back, to trust God. And then when we're in difficult situations, then we can have the hope that God's still there God's still working. Our churches uh, have been supporting for many years a charity called Ripple Effect that I'm chaplain to. It started as, uh, you may have known it as Send a Cow, and it works in Africa with sustainable agriculture. And St Mary's in particular have uh, pledged a few years of support um, and so they've be, their, their money that they have been giving over the last few years has gone to a specific project of, Send a, uh, of Ripple Effects sorry I still call it Send a Cow my apologies Ripple Effects uh, in Kenya uh, a place called Migori which is western Kenya on the lake uh, uh, near the, near the lake, uh, edge of Lake Victoria and it's been working particularly with women and helping them to not only grow crops, but to um, be able to take those to market and to, to build up a bit of resilience. It's a project that runs for four years and it's just come or coming to its end. You may have been aware last winter that East Africa was experiencing some of the worst droughts for decades. Magori was in that area. And then in uh, April, I think it was, the rains came. Great. But they came so torrentially that so much was washed away. People lost their, their homes, their possessions, their, their latrines that they'd built were washed away, their crops were washed away. Now Ripple Effects, not a disaster relief agency, it works in sustainable agriculture in the poorest areas of Africa. But the staff wanted to see what, how these people were coping in Magori, what they could do. Uh, and they got in canoes and canoed to Magori when the floodwaters were still up not quite sure what to find uh, and they found that having worked with these people for three and a half years having had three uh, three harvests having learnt so much about sustainable agriculture and about learning so much about being thankful for what they have 
and seeing opportunities with what they have, which is one of the wonderful things that Ripple Effects does. Not what we haven't got, but what we have. Um, the, the Ripple Effect workers were really surprised that already, even though there were still floodwaters around in some places, the people in Maguri ha that they'd been working with had al already started to rebuild. They'd replanted their crops where they could. They were full of hope and resilience that they didn't have before. And I was just reflecting on that and our harvest and climate change and so many other things. Their resilience was inspirational. I, I might, I might, I mean, amongst such a time of difficulty. So I wonder if we can spend a little bit of time being grateful, thinking about what we have rather than what we haven't got, giving thanks to God, reflecting on those times in our lives when he's provided for our needs, when perhaps we've stopped and prayed. And maybe, maybe then we can take Jesus' words a little more easily. Don't worry, your God knows your needs. Amen. So let's take a moment now to pray. Heavenly Father, our creator and our provider, we give you thanks for our many blessings, for the beautiful world that you have made, for the countryside and for your provision for food. We thank you for the harvest this year in the UK and around the world. We thank you for those who work the land and process our food. Lord, we pray for all those who live in poverty who don't know where the next meal will come from. We pray for organisations like Ripple Effect, for those who can help in a long-term, sustainable way to enable people to feed themselves. We pray for greater generosity throughout the world, that the, the abundance of the harvest can be shared fairly. Lord, we pray for those who are caught up in wars. We pray particularly for the Middle East, for Ukraine, and Russia, for Sudan, for the many other conflicts around the world. And we pray for peace. We pray that people would let go of greed and learn to see one another as human beings in your image. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling at this time. Those known to us. And those known only to God. Those in our hospitals. Those ill at home. Those struggling with poor mental health. We pray for your healing hand.
And we pray for those who've died and those who are grieving for your comfort at this time. And as we bring those prayers before you, we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. and the blessing. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may lead you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and those with no one to love. Now and always. Amen. May you have a blessed week and I look forward to seeing you again soon.